Welcome back to World Crisis Radio. Webster Tarpley here in Washington, D.C., calling your attention to Tarpley.net. Now, the Obama Health Bill, therefore, institutes the Mussolini fascist corporate state. This is the first time that such arrangements were uh, made into a form of government. It is post-October 1922 in Italy. It took shape in the 1920s and into the 1930s. Fascism was a corporatist. From the corporate, uh, corporate, by the way, does not mean corporation in the modern sense of a joint stock company. It means a medieval guild. And the guild, the idea that the ownership and the workers were inextricably linked, that's where we're going. In other words, the ownership of society and the government are coming together. It would typically be government, labor, and the owners uh, forced to sit together in the council, but of course everything done in the interests, not of the government, not of the people, of these huge powerful bankers and other owners. So a state-sponsored, a government-sponsored compulsory cartel for the purpose of driving down payments to doctors, driving down payments to nurses, driving down payments to other care providers, driving down the level of service delivered to the average person because of the cuts in Medicare, $500 billion, and the overload of Medicaid through the states, which is going to have rationing simply by virtue of uh, penury. If there are not enough means to go around, they're going to be triaged, and uh, you will see rationing in the Medicaid system coming to the fore. Uh, the other purpose, of course, to prop up speculative paper, speculative investments, speculative bets, above all derivatives. We've made the argument in the past. Insurance companies, well, you want to judge their current system, look at AIG. AIG, of course, the biggest of the bankrupt institutions, has cost the U.S. government uh, already $200 billion. You, the taxpayer, have put $200 billion into AIG because they had created this infamous hedge fund in London which issued $3 trillion of derivatives more than the gross domestic product of France. Uh, these other companies have done the same thing. They have gone heavily into derivatives, and a lot of them are shielding immense derivatives losses. But in this case, rather than have the Treasury come along with the TARP uh, and the Federal Reserve and the FDIC dealing with pr banks primarily, these are now health insurance companies, so they are going to be bailed out by you. You are forced to pay 10% of your income at a minimum, and it goes from 10% up to some say 20% or 25%, to these sinister, predatory private insurance companies that are for-profit, deregulated, and they're coming after you. And now they have the government on their side. Now the IRS, the Internal Revenue Service of the United States, is now dedicated to the task of forcing you to pay your bill to Aetna, forcing you to pay your bill to WellPoint. If you don't pay your bill, you don't just lose your insurance, the government will come after you and force you to pay. So the government is now the bill collector and the collection agency for these uh, widely despised insurance companies. Obama, with his demagogy, attacks the insurance companies. Well, if they're so bad, why are we being forced to buy their shoddy, overpriced products? There are no cost controls in the bill in the sense that when I say cost, I mean what you have to pay, you, the individual. There is no shielding. There's no price control on what they're allowed to, to charge you. There's no mechanism that limits how much they can increase the payments from year to year, as far as I can see. So that's the fascist corporate state. Now, within this, it seems to me quite clear that the individual mandate is the unconstitutional part, as I have argued in the past. Uh, this individual mandate is simply the, the most offensive feature of this bill. It's the, the, the thing that makes the federal government into the collection agency for these predatory private companies is that you are now forced at gunpoint with the federal <laughs> law enforcement coming after you. You've got to buy an insurance policy from one of these companies whether you want to or not. Uh, it is unconstitutional in the extreme. It is absolutely unprecedented that anybody who doesn't recognize how unprecedented this is is simply a quackademic and a charlatan. And I'm thinking of that guy, Jonathan Turley, uh, who made his name attacking Clinton as a Clinton gator, then shifted anti-Bush when that was the, uh, the prevailing wind in Washington. And now, like a weathercock, he's turned himself around 
and he's uh, in favor of the uh, of the individual mandate. The individual mandate is a reactionary Republican idea. It comes from the mind of reactionary Republicans, in particular, the reactionary scoundrel Senator Grassley of Iowa, a reactionary, came up with the idea of using the federal government to force payments to the uh, insurance companies. That is, they say, expanding the pool. Get everybody into the pool. Make everybody pay, and then there will be enough money for uh, the, uh, the imperative that the companies have got to cover the pre-existing conditions. Well, there was, 10 or 15 years ago, something called the Patient's Bill of Rights. It was a half-hearted Democratic attempt that was shot down by Newt Gingrich, Dick Armey, and other reactionary Republican thugs who are now parading themselves as the leaders of the Tea Party. The Patient's Bill of Rights said things like, no such thing as pre-existing conditions. They can't take your uh, insurance away if you get sick, and a few other basic things. Uh, this got nowhere, but that would have been reasonable, and that did not involve forcing the federal government and forcing you to convoy money into the hands of these predatory private insurance companies that have now taken over significant parts of the federal government. Remember that uh, interesting quote from President Roosevelt, when you have a private interest that takes over the government or large parts of the government, that is fascism. Well, that's what it is. There is no precedent in U.S. history for the federal government saying to you, you must buy a product or service from a private company on a list that the government is going to give you. It's unconstitutional. It is absolutely unprecedented. Yeah, we have the Interstate Commerce Clause, and I'm all for it. The Congress should regulate interstate commerce big time. But in what interest? Uh, not in the interest of these predatory uh, companies, and not through this absolutely unprecedented and novel procedure, did you're forced to buy something from a private company. If the government wants you to have something, suppose the government wants you to have a gas mask, they'll take it out of general revenue and raise some tax if necessary. They'll buy it and they'll give it to you. That, w that works. There is a way, if you want to have an individual mandate, and I've said this before too, the only legal way to have an individual mandate goes like this. You pass a law that says everybody's federal income tax, all individuals experience a 7 or 8 percent or 9 percent increase in their federal income tax, but if you go out and buy insurance, we'll then give you a tax credit, which you can then use to counter that, so you can essentially come out and break even. If you, uh, if you buy this insurance, you then get the tax credit. That goes on the, on the back of the return under tax credits, and therefore your tax is, uh, is wiped out in that way, but they chose not to do that. They chose to do it as a matter of coercion. You're coerced to buy a product from a private company. If they want you to have it, they should establish Medicare for all, tax you for it, and, uh, and, uh, and urge you to take it. Uh, and most people would. That would be an attractive offer. But this is coercion, this is unconstitutional, and it has to be overturned, it has to be struck down. Back in a minute. 